going on everybody I am back uh, breaking down Wednesday's 11 game slate it's a weird slate a um, lot of games with totals in the same sort of area and even in the places like Chicago and Utah where um, their implied totals are pretty low we've got guys out for both of those teams so there's a lot of value in flux so let's just get started uh, first game we're looking at is Hawks Kings. Taking a look at the Hawks, um, their implied totals 104.5. I don't see a ton to like here. Um, Ilyasova is supposed to be back tonight, which is going to thin out some of the minutes in the front court. And it's not as if these guys were super playable to begin with. Uh, I, you're very rarely going to be grabbing, you know, Collins or Babbitt or Deadman. Um, so I think the only real place to be looking here for this game tonight would be Schroeder. Um, 7,000 on FanDuel. Uh, needs 35 to hit 5x. Um, hasn't been playing well in the past two, but definitely has the ability to get upwards of 35. You know, three straight here uh, in early November. So especially against the Kings, who are not particularly good. Um, I think Schroeder is probably the only piece of this game that I would want. Uh, from the Hawks side. You never know about, you know, guys like Bazemore or uh, Tareem Prince where you just need to fit in a guy at 5,000 or whatever and it's your last guy. It, I don't hate that, but I probably wouldn't be trying to, you know, shoehorn Hawks into my lineup. So we'll hop over to Sacramento now. They've got one of a, not really the best implied totals. Should probably rank those now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, that'll work. Um, not yeah, not the best implied total for Sacramento. Uh, they're just not good, and nobody plays enough minutes to be confident here. I can't see maybe Bogdan, but I mean you're rolling the dice. If you're playing guys in Sacramento, you're playing GPP lineups. You're not playing cash. Um, there's nobody on this on this team that should be played in the cash lineup tonight. So ignore it. If you're playing GPPs. You know, lower salary guys that are going to get some shots. Bogdan, I mean, if you think that Zach Randolph is just going to go ham like he did, was it last week? Yeah, back-to-back 30-point -back games. If you think he's going to do that, great. Um, but otherwise, just avoid Sacramento. They're not worth watching or rostering. Let's go to the Heat. Heat and the Wiz, um, really even game in Miami. Should be a really good fantasy game for some guys. Um, not a lot jumps off the like the table quickly, but um, it should be a fun game. Just looking at it here, in terms of value, um, I do like Whiteside tonight, but 88 feels tough on an 11 game slate. I, I think we're gonna. I think I like a couple other options more than Whiteside, but. I think he's in a good spot. Um, he could also get into early foul trouble and just be locked down on the bench. So something to keep in mind. Every time I like Tyler Johnson, it ends up being the wrong play. I get a lot of Tyler Johnson on the 8.3s and not a lot of Tyler Johnson on the 32.9s. So... He's always appealing because he plays, you know, 30 minutes a game and he's in mid fours in salary, but I'm never totally confident in what I'm getting with him um, when I when I try to roster him. It's The Heat have been tricky for me. I feel like I'm always on the wrong guy, whether it's Tyler Johnson or James Johnson or, you know, I've, I've gotten a lot of Josh Richardson this year on the days where he does these three and not a lot on days where he drops 33. So 
don't be confident in anything that I say when it comes to the heat. I have a very little skill in projecting out which actual heat members are going to do anything good. So just from a value perspective, take a look at Whiteside. I think that Tyler Johnson is worth a look. And then depending on where you're spending up today, um, and Tyler Johnson on DK in particular looks really good. Depending on where you're spending up, I could see making a play at maybe maybe Josh Richardson under five should get 30 minutes. You know, he needs 24 and a half for five X on FanDuel. He can get there. Just put up 33 in his last one. Um, had a couple days off. Could be in a good spot. Now the Wiz. I like Wall tonight. I don't know why. Um, I mean, obviously I know why it's John Wall, but um, for some reason I just have a feeling that he's going to, to have a big night. I don't know if I'm going to end up getting him in my lineup just because of how big the slate is, but I'm hoping that, you know, having a day or two off, low minutes in his past two outings, I think that he could hop back into this 50-53 range. Um, I think that puts him in a pretty good spot. So I do like Wall tonight. I like Beal as well. I mean, he's going to be getting a lot of, I would guess, waiters. But maybe they'll have waiters on Ubre, And they'll have Winslow on Beal. But for some reason, I just... I see Wall and Beal having a good game. Which I guess it implies that I think that the Wizards are going to win tonight. But I, I don't necessarily think that. So, I'm all over the place. It's early. It's 7.05. I shouldn't be doing this this early. Um, Washington always sort of grades out well because their starters get big minutes. So you'll always see, you know, Porter, Gortat, Beal, Wall. They're all going to get 30 plus. It's not like the situations with the Kings where everybody gets 22 and you can just ignore the entire game. Um, I'd love to start being able to roster Markeith. He's just not playing enough minutes. Um, you know, 20 apiece in the past two. Until his minutes get back up into the you know 28, 29 range, he you can't you can't really roster him right now. So I think Wall and Beal are the are the main looks. And then if you're feeling froggy and you think that Whiteside picks up early fouls, you know, Wall gets to the rim twice in the first quarter, slams into Whiteside, two quick fouls on the bench. Gortat could be sneaky. I'd say more GPP than anything else. Um, but he could be a sneaky play in a GPP because of um, the potential for Wall to get into the paint and pick up quick fouls on Whiteside. Now, Nick's Jazz in a game that is probably atrocious. Jazz without Gobert, which is a shame. And the Knicks just aren't particularly good outside of Porzingis and the amazing Enos Cantor. Um, so I, I like Porzingis a lot since they're uh, since the Jazz's front court is sort of in shambles right now. You'd have to assume that uh, Porzingis is going to be in a pretty tasty matchup. Um, so I think he'd be one of the first few guys I would look at. I don't love the implied total, and obviously this isn't going to be the fastest game that's ever played. Uh, I just think Porzingis is in a great spot. The Jazz defense is dramatically different with Gobert not on the floor, so this is a per this should be a perfect spot for him. Um, and he's obviously been playing incredible. You know, 68-point game, 55-point game. He had 49 in 27 minutes a couple nights ago. Just, he's going crazy. Um, so I really like Porzingis tonight. As for the rest of the Knicks, I, I, I don't see anything of value. Um, you can probably talk me into Cantor, but I think Favors is still good and... 
he'd probably be getting a little bit more of like Ekpe Yudo, and that's not necessarily great for him either. So there are better spots for Cantor, but I get it if you know you think that he can have some offense uh, against the Jazz. And then for the Jazz, it's just not a fun team to roster for fantasy. It's especially with Gobert out. As weird as that sounds, you would think, you know, fire up Derek Favors, which I don't necessarily disagree. I, I mean, he's only 6,000. He needs to hit 30. He's just got to get the minutes. Um, I would I would want to see him getting more than 27 uh, and see him getting more like this 36. And if he does that, I, I mean, it's a no-brainer. If he's going to be getting anything above 28, if you think that he's going to play more than 28 minutes, um, you should be rostering Derek Favors. Just, it's worth that shot. It's, uh, it's not as if the Knicks are going to be putting him on lockdown or anything. Um, I think he is in the best spot either site, particularly on DK. 5600. That's a this is a great price, and you know you can see the two green indicators. It's not the be all end all, but it does catch your eye. Um, I would say Favors is the play here. And then if Donovan Mitchell is going to play 35 minutes like he did in the last one, um, you know, he looks great. I have him in for 30 minutes right now. And he's been... You can see here I've got his usage at 29%. He's he's going after it. <laughs> he's, ta he's taking his best shot. So if you are a Donovan Mitchell fan tonight, I think he's he looks good. Um, I wouldn't be trying to get two jazz guys. I think that... If I were going to be getting anybody from the Jazz, it'd be favors. But if Donovan Mitchell is the you know your last guy in, the guy you're fitting in at shooting guard with 6,200 left, by all means, uh, I I think that he's in a good spot. I'll hop to Charlotte. I say it every time. I really need to rebuild these tables so they're in alphabetical order. What a weird, weird Excel bug. So for Charlotte, uh, Batum is back. Um, he's going to be on a minutes limit. So it almost makes Charlotte unplayable in a way. I mean, nothing's going to change for Kemba. Um, but you'll see a slight trickle down from Lamb, from Monk, from MKG, you know, from even from Marvin Williams and Kaminsky. These guys are going to lose a couple minutes um, just because of filling... Batum's coffers back up. So all of these prices need to are going to need to normalize again with Batum out. It's one of the main things that I think people forget about when someone comes back from injury after being gone for a little bit, where all of the salaries on the Hornets, ignoring like their other injuries, all of their salaries have essentially been normalized throughout this season. You know, Lamb's salary at 5500 is his salary on FanDuel ignoring Batum. If, when Batum comes back, his role changes. So it it makes it hard to grab any of the guys on the wing for the Hornets because we don't necessarily know how Batum's minutes are going to work their way out. So I think if you like Kemba tonight, he's in a good spot. Uh, there's no defense on the Cavs. So Kemba's in, Kemba looks good, but I can't get comfortable with Lamb, Batum, Monk, MKG, Marvin Williams, Frank Kaminsky. I can't get comfortable with any of those guys tonight just because we need to see how Batum gets worked in and how those rotations change. So hopping over to Cleveland now. We've got everybody's favorite villain, LeBron James. Just going hard on social media lately. Um... They've got a great implied total, 110, uh, that's third. I don't know if anybody can hear that, that's my dog uh, whining in the background. I like Braun, 11-3 is not cheap, but with this implied total in Charlotte, you know, Batum might be a little rusty. I would assume that he would see some, but you know, a lot of Batum on D whenever he's out there. Um, so he's, Batum's got to knock the rust off, and chasing LeBron around for 36 minutes is probably not the best way to do that. Uh, so he's going to get a trial by fire tonight. 
So definitely like LeBron. Um, other than that, you can probably talk me into JR. There's something I wanted to talk about recently that I've been looking at a little more. I'll add it to the FanDuel sheet. Been meaning to talk about this. Just haven't remembered to add it to the sheet. So, what I have here, two columns that I tend to look at a lot when I try to think about the flow of a game. And the first one is obviously usage rate, which I assume anybody watching this is familiar with. The other one is percentage of points, which is, uh, this is using my projections. This is the percentage of their fantasy points on a per possession basis that they get from just scoring. So someone, will be the easiest way to show you guys. So someone like, JJ Redick gets 72% of his fantasy points from scoring. Makes total sense. He's not crashing boards and doing all and blocking shots. He's just, he's out there to shoot and he shoots. The analog to that, you know, someone like Bogut, Noah, um, Bebe, these are guys that are going to get rebounds, you know, block shots. They're not exactly just getting crazy amounts of buckets. So there's a balance there where you need to think about the way that guys get their points and whether or not they're sort of in control of that scenario. So someone like JR, who's got a projected 12% usage, but gets more than 50% of his points from scoring. The average here is 49, so it's easier to just say 50 from, uh, you know, just for eyeballing purposes. So he's... He needs someone else to get him his fantasy points. So if you see a lot of scenarios where he's going to be able to spot up, he's great in a, in a situation where you think, okay, he's going to have some open looks. He might be good in a GPP scenario. Now, if you have guys who have higher usage and higher percentage of points, those are guys that are going to be able to create their own shot they dictate themselves. It makes the matchup look a little bit different. So I've been trying to look at usage rates and the way that people get their points. So someone like, and you know, Shumpert, Shumpert's not the best example for a fantasy perspective, but Shumpert's at, Shumpert's at 12% usage and 44% for his percentage of points, which means that even if people aren't really getting him involved, he should still be filling out the box sheet with rebounds, steals, assists. Like, he's getting his stuff without having to be involved. So if, for some reason, he gets involved, um, those will be the nights where Shump does something really crazy. He, now, Shumpert's a bad example because I, I don't find him to be particularly good. Um, but it is sort of one of the ways that I've been looking at games lately to see how best to fit guys in depending on how a game is supposed to go. So ultimately, uh, if you want anything from this game, you want LeBron, um, potentially Kemba, as I mentioned before. Head to Memphis now. They've got a decent imply total for uh, as far as Memphis goes, but I, this is going to be a tricky one. So Jermichael Green is supposed to be back. Um, which is going to make everything in their front court it's a, real similar to Charlotte. Jermichael Green's going to come back, so all of the guys that sort of play in and around Jermichael Green are going to have minutes impacts, and it's going to be a minutes impact that doesn't fit their salary right now. So for now, I don't see this as a situation for rostering anybody. I don't want, you know, I see that he's coming out green here, but I don't. I'm not confident enough in his minutes to think that Jermichael Green is a play tonight. Um, I'm probably not going to touch any part of Memphis. If you want, I think Conley's probably in a decent spot. 
but his minutes have been fluctuating. Well, now I'm wrong. They haven't been fluctuating. Ignore what I'm saying. His points, on the other hand, have been fluctuating. 13 and 33 minutes, 19 and a half and 28 minutes. If I were going to take someone from this game, and I had to, I would take Mike Conley. I would not be excited about it. It would be scary. Pacers. Man, Grizzlies Pacers is a game that, like, I don't, I, I can't imagine watching it. It's just two teams that I don't feel like are actually in the NBA. They're just boring. Sorry, Grizzlies fans or Pacers fans. All four of you that are probably going to listen to this. Um, Pacers, not the best implied team total. It's 19th out of the 22 teams that play tonight. Um, I want to see Turner start playing more minutes before I'm thinking about rostering him at 8,000. Uh, on DK, he's much more in play, but for right now, I don't see it. And with the Grizzlies, I mean, I know grit and grind is over, but they're still not that style of team. It's still a Conley Gasol team. Um, so nothing is flashy for the Pacers tonight. Um, if you've watched any of the other videos, you'll know that I have a success failure relationship with Oladipo in that I only have success um, when I don't take him and I only have failures when I do. So it's not a spot that I think Oladipo is looking good for, which means, let's see, what's his high in the past week and a half? 47 and a half? Consider 47 and a half uh, a lock for Oladipo since I'm not on him. That'd be my That'd be my recommendation. Got to start hustling here. Bucks Pistons. See, this is the problem. So many of these games are just in this like mid 100s wheelhouse. So you have to take a look at everything. Even the garbage seems like the Bulls have something to look at. Which, who wants to roster a bull? Especially now that apparently everybody hates Miritich. Even though he got knocked out. Weird, weird stuff. Must be a real asshole. <laughs> um, okay, Bucks, Pistons, mid tier in terms of implied points. Um, it should go as no surprise that Giannis is in play in cash. Um, he's just amazing. It's really all you can say. He's good for 55 plus. He needs 60 to hit 5x. Um, if you want to roster Giannis and Cash, I'm never going to tell you no. It's just smart. He's amazing this year, just playing out of his mind. Um, so take a look there. Other than that, I still want to see more out of the new backcourt. So I'm not totally comfortable with Bledsoe and Brogdon. Uh, Middleton's there, so if you think he's going to get a good shooting night off, then that's a good spot for you. Um, but I don't see anything that makes me want to just go crazy here. Um, I'll try to put together a lineup with Giannis to start and see where all the value fills out, because there's going to be some value tonight, especially if any late news comes out. Um, but I, I don't see it. I don't see it in this game. We need to know more from the Bledsoe Brogdon backcourt and how that's going to work out. Otherwise, right now, we're just guessing. Pistons, another team that I'm never right on. It's just a bunch of guys in that middle tier where, you know, it's Jackson and Bradley and Stanley Johnson, Tobias Harris, where, you know, two of them are going to have a great game. One of them's going to have an okay game. And the other one's going to lay an egg. I'll take the egg every time. I'm, rarely am I going to get anybody else right. It's, just the, it's the teams that are balanced that trip me up the most. So Pistons, 102 uh, implied total, not a great spot. I will say I think Drummond looks good for tonight. If you're looking to get um, some exposure to the Pistons, which is an awfully specific thing to do tonight. But I think Drummond looks good. Um, I 
I don't really see the Bucks defense as any sort of great shakes. So I think Drummond could can have a really full stat line tonight. And then from there, um, Stanley Johnson's supposed to be back. I'm projecting him in. Um, otherwise, I, there's nothing that I see that stands out big time. It's just not the game for me. Yeah, Minnesota and the Spurs is one where I want to love Minnesota tonight. Spurs on a back-to-back. You know, Tibbs is going to grind these guys into the ground. So in some way, Wiggins, Butler, T, Gibson, Towns, you're going to want parts of this. The weird thing is, I feel like Greg Popovich is a wizard, and whoever I pick... Pop is going to come out and play like a triangle and two on Towns, and Towns will have four points, and Andrew Wiggins will go for 45 or something crazy. So, with that said, my recommendations are to get probably two parts of this. I just feel like this isn't going to be a spot where uh, Pop is going to try to push anything crazy. In the second game of a back-to-back. So. I like Towns. A lot tonight. And. I like Butler a lot tonight. Um, Wiggins is a GPP for me. For tonight at least. Um. Now, Wiggins is a good example. 27% usage, 68% of his points from points, which basically means he's going to get his shots. How do you think his looks are going to be? Because you're really just betting on the consistency of his three-point shot and how much he gets to the line. Um, I don't love Wiggins tonight, so he'll probably go off, but I would my focus would be Butler and Towns. And then I can see a real spot for Gibson tonight. Just because I mean he's gonna be grinding against Aldridge, who's been playing well, but you know, he's not some youthful gent. And then I mean Pow is just an old, old man. Gibson should be able to outwork him. Um, you know, he can get a, a boatload of boards tonight. Especially if it gets rough for the Spurs and they start heaving. It's just not working and they got a bunch of the young guys in. Minnesota's in a good spot, guys. Focus on. Let me know in the comments. Um, Thursday morning when the Spurs win by 25. And I'm an idiot. Um, speaking of the Spurs, um, I don't really want to touch them at all tonight, but I generally don't want to have any Spurs in general. Uh, if you need to have a Spur, I think that LaMarcus Aldridge is the only guy to look at. Um, he's been playing really well this year. Left for dead. Signed that new contract and just coming up last night, dropped a 50 burger. Um, he needs 41 and a half to hit 5x on FanDuel. So, again, like Minnesota's defense isn't spectacular, which you would expect it to be, or at least expect it to get better under Tibbs. But I think Aldridge is in play here if you really like the situation. But their implied total is, you know, 17th ish for the night that's pretty low so you don't need to force it next pelicans you could roster boogie or ad revolutionizing dfs here people um so it's pelicans raptors raptors on the back to back if i had to pick between Davis and Cousins tonight. I think I would take Cousins. I think he's in a better spot. And I would assume that it would be Abaka on Davis. And then Cousins would mostly get 
some sort of combo of Valanchunas, Pirtle, and Bebe. So I think AD is probably in the better spot there. And then Rondo's back. I've got him in for 18 minutes. Who the hell knows? He played some little amount of minutes. Yeah, five minutes two nights ago. Uh, no way to figure out what's going to happen here. What I what I am confident in is don't touch Jameer, don't touch Eton Moore. Those are the minutes that are going to drop. I mean, Drew might see a drop of one or two, but this is just going to push Drew to playing more at the two. So I, I think that's probably the end of ever wanting to roster uh, Jameer Nelson or Eton Moore. And then I think Tony Allen's going to be back, but um, you don't want Tony Allen or Dante Cunningham in the middle of your lineup. So with that th with that said, uh, AD. Just go with AD and feel good about it. Crafters or the Drakes, whatever you prefer. Decent implied total, 106. It's 10th for the day. DeRozan and Lowry were pretty good last night, but coming in on this back-to-back, -back, I think that the only major eyes that I would have on this game would be OG and CJ Miles. Uh, I liked them both yesterday. Miles had a big game in 17 minutes. OG, you know, he had 23 in 30 minutes. Like it's not a, it's not a giant giant game, but that'll work at 3,200 or 3,100. Miles is an even better look on DK because of the three-point bonus, but I think he's in a really good spot. Um, he should be able to get some shots up. And at those prices, you don't need much to jump off. Now, this is all in assuming Norman Powell is still not back, um, just because they're going to have to fill those minutes. And... You know, OG is young. I know he's coming off the knee injury, but I would assume that he's still going to get... I've got him in for 25 right now, but I think there's upside in his minutes. And I think that there's upside... In, you know, CJ Miles only played 17 minutes last night. I think that's probably low. If he gets anything over 20, um, I've got him at 24 right now, which may be a tad high, but I like it anyway. Um, pull the power forward down at DK. Um, that, that would be my focus right now. Some sort of combination of one of those two guys. Um, probably OG. Just because, you know, CJ Miles could shoot one for nine from three in 20 minutes and and be bad. But I think OG's just going to fill up the box score and just be chasing people around. It's a good spot. So Thunder and Bulls. Um, I don't have too much to say particularly about the Thunder I put in a fake line for this game just because there isn't a line out as of my recording. Um, Carmelo's up in the air. I think Steven Adams is still up in the air. So that can be weird for everything that's here. I've got Melo in and I've got Steven Adams out, but who knows? Um, and the Bulls are trash regardless. So even if Melo sits... Uh, Oklahoma City is still going to be the favorite in this game. I've got them as a 10-point favorite. That'll go down if Melo sits as well, but uh, I'm fine with Westbrook. I'm fine with Paul George. Um, other than that, you're going to want to know news before we would try to use any punts. Like, if Melo's out, we probably want Jeremy Grant. Um, and if Melo's out, you know, we probably want we could probably take a look at Roberson too, but no, that's not like the most sexy uh, guy to grab. Um, but I think, you know, Westbrook and George both look pretty good here. And uh, you can comfortably grab either one of them. There's not going to be much going on for the Bulls uh, tonight. Speaking of the Bulls. So right now I have Justin Holiday projected as out, which means, and I have Markin in, um, which means that, you know, they're just trotting out a bunch more trash. Um, Portis is up to 5,300. 
he's been pretty good since he's been back, which sucks. I was hoping he was just going to be trash. Um, but with Justin Holiday out, you need to they need to fin funnel those uh, minutes somewhere else. Um, so feel free to take a look at you know Jerry and Grant or Chris Dunn or even Denzel Valentine, I guess. Um, it's just hard to get excited about rostering the team with the worst projected total. That isn't very good to begin with. Especially if Melo plays. I, I mean, how many guys... Man, if they were healthy, it'd be even crazier. Would anybody... No one on the Bulls would start for the Thunder. Right? No. So... They're ju it's just a bad spot. Ignore the Bulls. I don't even know why I'm looking at it. Ignore the Bulls. Who cares if Justin Holiday plays? You're just you're rostering D League stars. They're just garbage. Portland, Portland and the Magic. Um, Portland's a pretty decent favorite here. They're at home. Um, rule of thumb: if you like Lillard, play CJ. If you like CJ, play Dame. Um, against the Magic, I like CJ tonight, so fire up Dame Lillard. Um, they both look great to me for tonight. It's always great, you know. CJ at FanDuel, especially sixty nine hundred. It's a great price. He's not as he's not priced as well on uh, on DK, but he's got the do the double eligibility, so it helps a bit. Um, I like CJ a lot on FanDuel, so. Like I said, fire up your Dame Lillards for tonight. That's the spot. And then um, I can see Evan Turner in a good spot. Especially on FanDuel. Um, if you want to have two parts of the Blazers, I think that's very reasonable tonight. Other than that, you can convince me on Nurkic. I've got him at 28 minutes. He needs 40 for 5x. Hasn't done it in his last three. And did it three games in a row before that at least. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm on Nurkic. I think he's in a good spot. Don't be afraid to, to run out Nurkic and Lillard or Nurkic and McCollum. I think that could be a good, a good look. Magic. And I got a Hustle. Getting a little long here. Gats to go to work. Sixteenth and implied total. And again, this is all stream of consciousness stuff. This is the first I'm looking at it each morning. So you're getting everything that's jumping out to me um, when I do this walkthrough. And I'm going to try to start doing these only for the big slates. So nights like last night where it's only three games it's hard for me to tell you guys anything that you don't already know there's only so many guys you can potentially roster it's the 11 game slates where you kind of want to you know hear some opinions so i'm going to try to stick to only like the average to bigger slates for any any games now that i'm no longer sick and back from vacation austin texas great spot great tacos shout out to every taco i ate all five different places. Um, Magic and the Pacers. Man, I don't really like anybody on the Magic tonight. I could probably bump up Aaron Gordon's usage. Let's see how that affects things. Oh, that's not a percentage. If Gordon sees a lot of Noah Vonley, I don't like it. Vonley is good on D. I, I 
my projections are generally pretty pessimistic about Fournier because um, he was people were freaking out over him this year. He was shooting the lights out. It was way over his norms. And people were wondering, you know, why is it projecting him so low? It's because it's he hasn't been that good in the past, and he's shooting out of his mind. Can't just look at his FanDuel totals. You need to look at the context behind some of those things. That said, he's in a pretty decent spot for tonight. So if you're going to grab any part of Orlando, you want to grab uh, Never Google. Now, a game that should be incredibly popular, and the last game of the night, Lakers Sixers. So, Lakers have the fifth highest implied total, and they are underdogs. Sixers have the highest implied total on the board right now. Um, I like Lonzo tonight. He's in a really good spot. Here's another one where you know I've got his usage at 18%, just a little bit under average, but he doesn't rely on points. So if he's if he gets cooking from a scoring perspective, that's going to be the day where, you know, if his shot falls, you're in great shape. If his shot's not falling, that's basically just a normal night for him, and he should be filling out with boards and assists. So highly recommend Lonzo Ball tonight. Um, and then from there... I don't... I don't know what the Lakers will do against Embiid because Embiid is going to or at least should be just destroying Brook Lopez just absolute decimation <laughs> just not he's not he doesn't have the legs anymore and Embiid is like next level athlete compared to Brook Lopez um I don't love Pope or Clarkson tonight or Ingram, really. I think... What's the trends on? Kuzma needs 31. Randall needs 26. I think Julius Randall's in a good spot for 5,300. I only have him at 22 minutes. I'm going to have to take a deeper look at that. He played 19 in the last one out. 27 in the game before that. If he can get a minute or two more, I think he's in a pretty good spot. Um, a lot of these guys I'd be okay with in cash. You know, they should ha they should be pretty highly owned just because of their implied total. But I think Lonzo is by far the best look in that uh, on the Lakers tonight. And then for Philly, um, I love me some Embiid on DK. He's basically a no brainer on Fanduel. You know, he's pretty expensive, but I think that he's He's definitely worth a look. They have the best implied team total. You know, Brooke Lopez is not good on D. It's just a really good spot. And then, in terms of anybody else on Philly, because I think, you know, this, Philly and the Lakers, you're going to want, I'd say probably three guys total out of this game. May, you know, maybe more if this is going to be a spot you're stacking. Um... Embiid is probably my favorite center on the board on DK. And then... Man, I don't... Ben Simmons is just so good. Simmons against the Lakers, so he'll be getting... Who the hell guards him? Yep, yeah, fire up Ben Simmons, too. I haven't looked the matchup stats. How have Embiid and Simmons been together? So if this plus minus stuff is nonsense here, again, I don't know. But I like to look at it anyway. Okay, so Simmons and Embiid. Well, this isn't even right. Not infor this information is not correct on Fantasy Labs right now. I don't know if you caught it before I accidentally hit a button. So if I click on Embiid and look at correlations, Ben Simmons is 0.23. You think, yay, they're highly co they're highly correlated positively. It could run out Simmons and Embiid. This is saying they've played 42 games together, which obviously they have not played 42 games together. 
they have played, I assume, 11, but these numbers just don't look correct to me. But 42 is 100% wrong. Ben Simmons never played before this year. Does Embiid even have 42 total games in his career? Uh, who knows? I mean, you can look that up. Anyone can know that. Um, I like ben, I like Ben Simmons. I like Joel Embiid. I think that those two both look really good. And if you want to look at Bobby Covington or McConnell, I think those are both really reasonable spots as well. All right, guys, that is it because I am running long and I've got to go to work and I know that I still need to get uh, these projections loaded up into the Excel sheet. I updated that Excel sheet yesterday um, to factor in uh, the implied Vegas point total. So that's something that I update now. Um, prior to that, all of the data was there to produce like a stat line. So a guy's two point rate, three point rate, free throw rate were all a part of the projections, but I was never squaring up the amount of points that were expected. So they'd be off by a little bit, you know, a couple points here or there. And I don't think that there's a more accurate measure of the expected points of a team than grabbing a line. I grab mine from Pinnacle. Um, so I'm using that as a standard. So I could probably give a quick peek here. So before I was just using two point rate, three point rate, free throw rate, but now I use all of those things and project out uh, the amount of points that a guy is going to score. So for here, um, using my minutes projections and all of my player ratings, I get to 98.3 total points scored by the Hawks. Um, the Vegas line is showing 104.5 right now. So basically that's six fantasy points that need to be distributed accordingly across the rest of the team. Um, so what I did was simply just adjust that up by that rate. So now in the game, I'm projecting the same amount of points scored as Vegas. Then I just add that back in. I do still give the little bonus for, uh, I give the extra hook for DK threes, but this won't dramatically change anything. It's only going to move a guy maybe a point in either direction, but I think it's just going to be a little bit more accurate. All right, that's it. Um, if you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter, hit me up on Reddit, hit me up in email, whatever you need to do. I'm around. I'll be around all night. Um, it's a it's a really interesting slate. It could be really interesting if any weird news comes out and you have the ability to stack up some stars. Um, but best of luck. And uh, if you like this, like the video, I would love for you to subscribe and I'll talk to you guys later.